Titusville, Florida, one of the great ones. I tell you what, that young man will leave a record at University of Florida as a person and as an athlete that'll, that'll be hard to match. Get a slow-mo on a great plate. I'll tell you, there's good blocking on there, too. Fernando Jackson, number 49. Darrell Williams getting a good block. I tell you, Jim Calamaris, number 71. You'll see him hustling downfield to get to help out on some second effort. That's a lot of effort and a lot of determination on the part of our special unit there. Georgia Tech's on offense, and you'll see a great play here by number 72, Doc Lucky. And Chuck Hatch from Brantford, senior football player from Brantford, Florida. Great player, great young man. Good play by Doc Lucky. I tell you, Doc puts uh, all those great plays together in 160 minutes. He can dominate uh, his, his position in the Southeastern Conference. But he's got to do it ever play and he can do it he's very capable we're in the third quarter now fourth and 18 we're back to punt there bill conover getting a 50 yard punt and he booms it out of sight i tell you he had a good night punting the football and there's bubba pratt from leesburg who wasn't able to play last week but he's back and we're mighty proud to have him back in action bubba was very alertly down on the football and uh, we got good field position there's another play by Doc, but we guess half from Tim Golden, number 57, and number 66, Robin Fisher in the middle, Jim, Jimmy Chris, number 59, Juan Collins, a free safety, one of the game captains, in to congratulate him. Dozier Hinton, number 78, controlling the line of scrimmage on his, at his point of attack. Had a good defense all, all during that time. There's good play there by little Fernando Jackson, 210-pound linebacker. He's not very big, but I tell you. <laughs> He makes a stick, and that was on third and one, forcing the situation where they had to kick the ball back to us. And I know we got some fans that are really, really pulling for the team up there to get to pull this thing out. But uh, and I tell you, it wasn't a, it wasn't a moment in that football game that uh, anybody could relax, and uh, we just didn't put the, the thing together offensively on execution. Now we got John Brantley in the football game. John keeps on a sprint out fast. We have very poor blocking on the corner. And his fate would have it, older brother John pulls a hamstring, and uh, he is unable to go, and uh, uh, unfortunately, but he, uh, there's no way to determine how long John will miss practice with a full hamstring, but I'll guarantee you he'll be back a little sooner than what the doctors say, can guarantee you that. There's a defensive front wall. There's no better way. You see it. I can't describe it any better than you can see the solid wall of that defensive front. And I'll tell you again, we're, they're doing this just by tightening up and taking up the slack, knowing that Steve Tanner and Dave Galloway and Scott Brantley is on the sideline. They just take up the slack and keep coming. And here you'll see another great play by David Little, almost an interception by Chuck Hatt. I go again. I told you David Little practices like a great football player. That's why he's a great one on Saturday. That's why it's, it's inside of him. It. It's not just because he's big, strong, and fast. That youngster, he goes out to practice to be good, and when he does that, there's no way he can prevent. He, he's just naturally good on Saturday. That's Jimmy Chris coming over on the play. That's a good play. Almost another interception. We had the good turnovers. Georgia Tech didn't have any success as far as running football. There's another sack by Kelly, and those are ends back there. Number 78, and there's Doc Lucky, and Tim Golden, all around him. I tell you, I believe Mike Kelly will remember that night, this night, for a long, long time because he hadn't been sacked five times probably in his life <laughs> in one ball game. And we took Tyrone Young, redshirt freshman from North Carolina ball game. We felt like he was a better runner. They had shut our passing game down. We had zero inches in the second half. Very disappointing second half in our passing game. Ty's a good runner. We felt like we could give us a little spark there that we needed. And uh, i tell you what, he comes in and gets some very tough yardage. Uh, by turning it up. He's got quickness. And here we are fourth, and that's more than fourth and one. It's almost fourth and two. We've got to have it to keep the drive alive and have a chance to win this football game. John L. Brown behind the big John Whitaker and Terry Williams. And that right side, Joe Wickline, Harold Galloway, and James Jones. We get pick up the very important first down keeping possession. You get a slow-mo on that. There's Jim Subers number 75, and there's uh, Bill Bennett, number 64. Our goal line short yardage preparation last week pays off right here. There's Bill Bell, mighty happy, and all of us are. There's no doubt in my mind with a minute 56, 7 to 7, that we're going to win this football game. Another possession down, down trying to get it in field goal range. There's another third and two, clutch situation. There's a very important first down. 
Still running the old power play, as old a play as there is in football. Good blogging by Joe Wickline and Harold Galloway. Coming off the football like a football team. I tell you what, we might have should have run the short yardage offense all day. But uh, I tell you, this is this tells something about a football team. They wasn't they wasn't wavering one iota. I told them after the game, we're proud of their effort. We're proud of their determination. We're proud of the fact that they knew they could win that football game. Tyrone Young keeping on a little counter option and getting some very tough yardage, but it is knocking it down there into the field goal range. And we run a toss play here with John L. Brown and just just a few plays to get get the ball in the middle of the field. That's another slow mo there. That's good blocking by Harold Galloway there on that play. And Bill Bell downfield giving second effort. Now here's a field goal attempt. Watch that free safety come up. Perfect timing. Goes over the top. He must have been 14 feet in the air or more. Perfect time. If he is off a quarter of an inch either way, it would have been our ball game. The ball was perfectly kicked, perfectly snapped, great hold. And uh, John Brantley went in there, even though with his injury, he wanted to hold the football, and Brian Clark has a lot of confidence in him. And gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we tie the ball. Tie, but uh, he just cannot say enough for that defense out there. Well, we're not we're not pleased with a tie anyway, Paul, and there's only one way to play this game, and that's to come out on top. But I guarantee you, our defense played well enough to win. And I saw Tim Golden, of course, intercepting the pass, scoring touchdown. We just had Doc Lucky get to the quarterback. I saw David Little rushing the passer, Robin Fisher. Uh, Dozier Hinton, Yancey Sutton. Uh, we we really missed Scott Brantley in there, who was injured early in the second quarter, but he's all right. The X-rays are back already, and he's uh, they're clear. Thank goodness he's healthy. And, of course, John Brantley pulled a hamstring later in the game, but uh, they'll miss some practice time, but they're all right. Thank goodness. But I'll tell you, Paul, we had a block punt, and we had a block field goal, both coming in the second half. And it, at the block punt came at a very critical time because it came on our first possession after the break when we were trying to get something started offensively. I was very disappointed with the execution. Uh, offensively in the second half, I was very disappointed that we didn't get points on the board with our offense, but the effort was there, particularly in that fourth quarter, and we began to attack people as we had wanted to at the half, and we began to make things happen. Now, what we've got to do is we're not going back all the way to point zero, but we're going back and study why did we prepare for Georgia Tech and where did we miss in preparation offensively because it has to be somewhere between Monday and Thursday. Some way we didn't prepare our young people right and uh, correctly. And we're going to have to find out how we did that so we can prepare right against Mississippi State, and that'll start early in the morning. We'll see what happens. Mississippi State next week here on Gator Highlights with Charlie Powell. Be with us. Florida State, Scott Brantley, who is not going to play football at the University of Florida. We have deepest admiration for Scott. I'm sure I'm sorry of the action he had. But more than that, I'm thankful that he's going to be healthy. I know he'll be great in any area in which he goes into. It is a football impossibility, in my opinion, to have a chance to be successful when we turn the ball over as many times as we did. There's no reason to talk about it was a reason we couldn't win. It's just impossible to be successful when we do that. Well, you've just heard head coach Charlie Pell's comments on today's game. Hello to you from Mississippi Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm Paul Cameron. I'll be back with head coach Pell and a look at the highlights after this. And I think the way the defense played, great play, great pressure there on the quarterback. There comes Vince Jones, a freshman from Tampa. Chuck Hatch came in, and David Little, one of his big plays of the day, number 51, comes up with the first interception. On the first four possessions of Mississippi State, our defense turned the football over. And I thought that was an indication of uh, the way the defense played and played their hearts out all day against Mississippi State. Great pressure by Chuck Hatch from Brantford, Florida. And watch Vince Jones, a freshman from Tampa Plant, coming in and getting pressure on the quarterback. There's Tim Golden, number 57, in pursuit. And Mike uh, David Little comes up with a big interception. This is our sprint out game. We've got a little more production on it. We probably didn't throw it enough. Chris Collins worth catching the football. I was proud that Chris caught the ball five times for the game. Got his first touchdown. He's a great one from Titusville, Florida. Bill Bacias turned the ball over uh, to and get, you know, he get possession of the football four consecutive times and uh, not put any points on the board. I think that's a that's the thing. It takes away our momentum. It takes away the juice maybe that we get started. And that's the fourth turnover that we get on their fourth possession. Chuck Hatch from Brantford, Florida. You'll see Yancey Sutton, number 50, coming in, forcing that bad, bad exchange. And Chuck Hatch 
coming up with a big fumble recovery. I thought our defense played well. I, I really did. We gave up a couple of big runs, uh, big gainers. There's John L. Brown, number 14. It was on fourth and one. We went for, for it on fourth and one on several occasions out of determination, determination to make sure we could maintain possession of the football. There's uh, Tim Groves back. John Gaffney. Number 42 from Jacksonville, Florida, making his first catch of the year. Mike Clark playing defensive tackle for the first time in college. I tell you, Mike uh, showed how unselfish he is. There's uh, Tim Golden in good pursuit. A lot of Gators around the football. Early in the game, I thought our defense was holding and pursuing. We had a lot of folks around the football. As the game drug on, the wishbone took its toll. That was a big play by Mississippi State. And I believe that was a poor, poor spot. It looked to me on the film, and it definitely showed he went out on the three-yard line. They got get it on the uh, one-foot line. But that's going to happen in this game of football as long as those folks with striped shirts uh, are human beings, and they and they are going to make some mental uh, judgment uh, mistakes, and that was just one of them. We, we're on first and ten. We're back in there, and this thing uh, was, a, was a kind of an albatross all night. We're on the – it's in the second quarter. And we get pressure from the backside. We get pressure from the backside on a missed assignment and uh, hitting from the blind side again and causing a fumble, and we give it back to him. We had six turnovers for the day. Ooh, that's way too much. David Little from Miami, Florida, making another great football play. We have said all along, David Little is an outstanding linebacker as they are in the country. I think he proved that. There's a Gordon Pleasance from Richmond, Virginia, number 23. He didn't play enough. He's running hard to get him the football. Good pass on this, too. Great protection. Good protection. Good pass. That number 70 got to be free there. I, he can't come off that block that quick. we got to hold him out of there a little bit longer. We lost Scott Brantley to injury, number 55, an All-American linebacker. Well, you know, it's very rare that a coach has the privilege of coaching a football player like Scott Brantley. And we were fortunate enough to be around Scott for 10 months as a football player, and we consider that an honor and a... And uh, we're better people because we did get to know Scott. Now, Scott's, a, Scott's healthy. Scott has a full life ahead of him. And that's what we can be so thankful for. We're going to retire 55, number 55, to honor Scott Bradley and what he has meant to the University of Florida football team, the city of Ocala, Ocala Forest High School, and the state of Florida because he's a homegrown product. He's an All-American. And I'm sure he'll redirect his energy, redirect his ambition, graduate from the University of Florida, and have a career in and anything he chooses because he's got that kind of stuff to him. We not only salute Scott Brantley this week, we also take a look at a great Gator supporter, Pat Summerall. Arkansas won the recruiting war for this former Lake City and later New York Giants football star, but now that Pat Summerall has returned to Florida to live, he's a full-fledged Gator. When I was asked to do the, the University of Florida highlights, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was not a request. I thought that was an honor. Uh, since then, these things have happened uh, that I've become more closely involved with the university, the Alumni Foundation. I say that I'm a Gator fan now, and I, I intend to, to continue in that direction. The CBS sportscaster gives the college experience credit for much of his success. That's the most valuable thing that can ever happen to you in sports, in class, in college, fraternity, uh, dormitory. I don't care where you go. If you learn how to meet your fellow man, and the guy you work with and live with will work against. And then you got it. University of Florida honorary alumnus, Pat Summerall. It was a case of a whole lot of LSU, a good football team, well-coached football team, with a lot of talent, a lot of depth. It's, they're going to give a lot of people trouble because they've got so many capable players of getting the job done. You just heard head coach Charlie Pell's comments on the Louisiana State-Florida contest. Hello, everyone, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm Paul Cameron. We'll be back to take a look at the highlights and talk more with Coach Pell after this. Outstanding job or rising above and beyond a call of duty. We start out the action on offense. Tyrone Young, the quarterback, very pleased with the way he played. Here he keeps on an option play. Get a little bit of roughhousing on the sideline. LSU, that's not unusual. Paul, I was really pleased with the way the defense battled. Uh, they kept things going there. Bubba Pratt from Leesburg, Florida, making a big play. There's David Little, number 51, from Miami Jackson High School. My, what a football player he is. There's Tim Golden, number 57, on the slow-mo. There's 
Vince Jones, number 86, freshman from Tampa Plant High School, one of Roland Ocosta's boys down there, a great football player, great prospect. Here we go with a good play there by Chuck Hatch on the corner. I believe you're holding there, number 86, or 40, 43, South Florida, near Fort Lauderdale. Great play by number 24. Now, number eight, Woodley, was in the ball game, and actually after he had trouble and both the defense did a great job of stifling his attack, they bring in another senior quarterback, Essinger, who just had a great night. He had a great play by Tyrone Young to number 21, Chris Collinsworth from Titusville, Florida. Great football play. 34 yards. Good protection on the corner there. Frank Holloway, 37. Gordon Pleasants, freshman from Richmond, Virginia. Tyrone Young, well-thrown ball, right on the money, and Chris. Here's Brian Clark on a big play of the night. We get the lead and go ahead of LSU in Baton Rouge, three to nothing, and it was a mighty, mighty good point in that ball game. Players and all students, each week we look at a player and his life on campus. In addition, we'll feature a great Gator supporter. This week, Chuck Hatch and Jimmy Kynes. One of the strongest parts of the Gators' performance so far this year has been the defensive secondary. Senior strong safety Chuck Hatch has been one key to the team's outstanding pass defense. The, the key to the whole thing is, is playing in the defensive backfield is your mental intensity because one play and you're beat, you know, and uh, that's all it takes. And as far as playing defensive line or linebacker or whatever, you can maybe make a mistake and not pay the full price, but as far as uh, being a defensive back. 